I was just trying to make some rocks based out of Houdini workflow, but I was trying to do it with Blender. I just wanted to, to show you how, basically how I ran around this. And uh, yeah. So here I'm in Blender and um, you can see my scene is <laughs> really chaotic. It has like just a few, few um, assets, which is basically the same one repeated um, a bunch of times. You can see the assets by itself. Is it crazy? But I thought it looked uh, pretty cool. Yeah, so this is how it looks right now. And now uh, we have this scene as well, which looked like that. And with just lighting of the scene, it's basically this. So how did I make it? Let me just show you right now. So here, if I open just a new file, I just create a new mesh node. I go to, into my Houdini tab, which is, I made it to look like Houdini. So the first thing you would want to do is divide this mesh but instead of dividing in a grid way it would be great to have like these shapes right here but as actual edges so how do you make this kind of stuff the first thing you want to do is like scatter some points on the faces so you do this with distribute points and faces I like when it's really tiny. So what you want to do is take each point and have it the middle of each face, like kind of grow the cuts from this point. So a cool way to do it, instance a vertex on each point. So if you do instance and points, uh, to create just a single vertex, you can do a curve line. Instead of having everything uh, really far away, you can do a really simple curve and just have one cut. So now you can see anything, realize the instances. For example, if I do curve to mesh, here the points appear again. I don't want it to convert it to mesh yet because what I will do is I will convert the original mesh, which is a plane, into a curve. So now we can do a mesh to curve. And the cool thing is uh, you can do a fill curve and you can fill everything with a uh, triangle. If I actually join my points here with the... Um, if I join my curve points with the mesh inside, it will try to fill everything with the points. So now it doesn't look like Forerunner uh, yet. So there's this amazing node that's called Dual Mesh that will kind of try to do what Forerunner uh, does. So it looks kind of bad right now, and it's also because the outer mesh is just four points. So you can do a simple curve here, and uh, do like maybe a hundred, and you have to check Kimp boundaries. And now you kind of have to find the amount that you like, maybe 30 or now. So the issue with um, distribute points and faces, it's actually distributing in a random way. So you can do Poisson disk and have distance minimum. So you can increase, for example, the um, amount of density and you can uh, have uh, different sizes. So if I do this, you can see that the final result will look uh, slightly better. But you can also uh, decrease the density, uh, the distance, and play with the density value, of course. What I like to do is actually use a gradient texture and plug the factor into the density factor. So you can see you can have way more points but yeah, you can basically play with this. I like to make the count value here, uh, which is 50, the same as the recent poll count. Um, because basically it will keep everything roughly the same size. And now what you can do, and then the cool part begins. Uh, it's when you actually extrude everything. And you can see it's extruding every individual faces. So this means you can plug a gradient node but right now, half of it is on top of one, and half of it is uh, below zero. So you can do a simple math operation with that. So you can add everything to one. You also want to multiply this by 0 0.5. And then you can put color in to control the look of it. Uh, but if you want, for example, to do something more organic like me, you can you can keep this color in, it's fine. Uh, but you can also put a power node. So a math operation and set it to power. Uh, what it does, it's basically a control for the offset. In case you did anything wrong, you can always use an attribute statistics. So attribute 
statistic, and you put it here, for example, and just uh, have it somewhere else. Just plug this in here, and now you can use the minimum and maximum. Bring a map range here, and just plug the minimum in the minimum, and the maximum in the maximum. And control H to uh, hide everything, and just plug this back into the extra face. And now, uh, everything won't be above zero or uh, below zero or above one because it will uh, restrain everything to one and zero, which is great. Let's say I like this, for example, and I just want to to have like a slight thing here. I also want like some randomness. It's really easy to do. You basically do a mass operation, which is going to be add, and you just plug a random value. Right now it's really strong, so what you can do is always multiply everything by a low value. By a low value, so 007 for example, maybe go 5. That's uh, great for me, so you can see before and after, before, after. So the issue you can have some um, stuff here that's really close to the edge. So it's always great to add all these bits. So maybe just like that. So now what we want is convert everything into a VDB and then remesh it into whole mesh, just to be able to put some details in there. The first thing you have to do is join the geometry from before extruding. So you can do this, type reroute, duplicate this, and then plug it here. And now you have everything here, but it's actually separate geometry. So you can always do merge by distance. And now it's all connected. I have my set of nodes and I did this thing that's called MG Remesh. So I can just plug it here. And basically what it does is converting everything into a volume and then converting back into a mesh. So I can increase the um, density even more. And you can see that's how it looks. I can also have an adaptivity count. And the cool thing is, it doesn't have this weird, you know, when you convert from a, a volume, you often have this ugly shapes. I have this, and now I have a bunch of geometry to work with. Uh, that's cool. If you're interested in, into how it works, it's really simple. You first convert everything to volume, then back to mesh, and then you set the position based off the original position. It kind of tries to shrink wrap everything onto the original position. And now what you want to do is just displace. So I also made this displace along normals. You just have to plug a texture in it. I think this one is the one I used. And now you can play with the strands. You can also play with the mid value. And you can see the texture is actually stretching. So in my original file, I kind of did this triplanar projection basically duplicates um, every coordinates, position coordinates, and it uses three, the x coordinate, the y and the z, then mix everything together. So I'm just gonna use this. I'm gonna use triplanar projection. You can plug it here, and it works right off the bat. If you want, you can also subdivide everything after the remesh, just subdivision surface. One time should be enough. And yeah, you already have a bunch of detail. And that's basically it. Uh, the cool thing with that setup is it's completely procedural, which means at any time you can go up here and do a curve circle, for example. Just plug this here, and you can see it all constrains into a circle. You can also do a curve star. Yeah, I like this. Plug it into here. And yeah, that's... That's pretty hilarious. And you can also obviously draw anything you want, like, I don't know, a random shape. And then you can do just an object, object info, and use the basic curve and just plug it here. And yeah, that's, that's really cool. You can really do anything you want with it. Now that I have this setup, I can actually just draw anything I want, just go into basic curve. You can see there's like some sort of tolerance. You can lower it down to maybe two or three and just draw anything you like. I don't know. Let's do some sort of map. I don't know. Just have fun with it. Just do anything you want. Yeah. And now look at that. That's awesome. I love it. Just draw a random spotlight. 
have fun with it. And now uh, you can see it's lacking a lot of details. So you can always go in and increase the amount of uh, resample geometry. And once you have that awesome detailed geometry, you can always go in, apply, and you can do a decimate. For example, I like this amount, it's pretty cool. And you can see in render it still looks pretty cool. And for the shader, into the base color, just get some sort of rock texture, maybe this one, yeah. And just do a basic uh, triplanar projection, bring out the specular. I like to have this plug into the specular, so basically you can bring down everything except like a few highlights. Yeah, that's the kind of map I like. Boom. So that's, that helps. It's really strong right now. Just find the right balance that you like. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You can always the texture for the mask. I have this cool moisturized noise from textures.com. It can be useful for a lot of stuff. So for example, if you do large patches and like bring a color rim, and then you can do a mix here, and then just plug this into the factor. And I, uh, what I did was take some sort of a really strong color. I think the one I took was this one. Yeah. So I did projection again, box. Yeah, pretty much this. Plug a hue situation here. And yeah, just plug another bump node and then use uh, the, this mask for the height. A new height and just use the same value here and here and yeah you can play now with everything just bring some assets in there you could basically change the shape but since we baked everything you would have to like repeat the process but now we have uh, the geometry nodes which is this one and yeah and that's it. You can basically take this asset and create some sort of scene with it. Put some water, lights, uh, anything you want. I think it's a cool asset. I try to now put on YouTube this kind of video where it's kind of slow and I just explain the stuff I do. If you like it, I'd love to know your thoughts about this video, about the process and stuff. If you have questions, please ask me. I hope you learned something with it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.